that be the desire of our heart too this morning. I'm hungry, Lord. My soul cries out for you. Oh, Lord, now as we look into the living bread, as we look into your word, may these dear people not hear me this morning. They will hear your voice. They will hear your gentle voice speaking to them this morning. You know where we are in our relationship with you. You know, Lord, if we have one or not. Father, I just pray just now, these moments that we we'll share together, you will give us attentive hearts and attentive minds to be able to understand what it is that you have to say to us and to be able to understand what you expect of us, that we will live lives worthy of you, that others will see the beauty of Jesus within us. So bless me as your speaker. Bless those who are sitting with him. For your name, I will pray. Amen. <coughs> what would you like for Jesus to do for you this morning? What would you want him to do? I know you won't be disappointed with what you asked him to do for you this morning. Sometimes we go into a store and we buy a certain item. And if it doesn't meet our expectations, we return it, don't we? <coughs> However, this morning I want to introduce to you a product that Jesus asked to offer you that you will never be disappointed. Just ask someone here this morning. It was following the Lord. There's nothing disappointing about following Jesus Christ. You can walk in any department store, providing you have the money, of course, and you can buy anything that this store has to offer you. But Jesus offers one product that this earthly store will never sell, and that product is salvation. Only Jesus can give you salvation, forgiveness of your sins. Jesus can do, has done, and will do many things for us. But this morning I want to concentrate especially on those who have yet to decide to follow Jesus. He can first of all forgive you of your sin. It's so simple. A little child can understand he can give you his Holy Spirit, and he can give you a praise, sorry, a safe crossing from death to life. Because this place, we will come to the place of the end of this world, but as a new beginning, as we're going home to Jesus. My scripture this morning is based on 1 Corinthians 2, which and 9 and 10, which says, however, as it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed it to us by his Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. You know God has done so much for us this very moment, friends. When you think of the fact that God allows you to breathe, God allowed you this morning to get up, to sit at a table and to have a meal, to have family and friends around us. God has indeed done a lot thus far today. The fact that we can sit at our tables, friends, three times a day and eat a decent meal. We must admit that God has indeed done so much for us. Most of us here this morning are fairly good health. Enjoying the blessings of God. God has done so many good things in our lives, and I believe the best is yet to come. First of all, this morning, Christ can forgive you of your sin. Jesus has indeed saved you of your sin. We know all of us were once sinners. It doesn't matter who you are, what you are, where you've been, where you came from. It doesn't matter if you have money or if you don't have any money. But one thing does matter that we're all sinners in the sight of God and we need it to be forgiven. Romans 3 and 23 says, For I all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. 
Isaiah 53 and 6 says, All are like sheep have gone astray, and we have turned to his own way. 1 John 1 and 8 says, If we, com we complain to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. There are all kinds of sins in this world that people commit every day that need to be forgiven. <clears throat> there are those, the base evil sins of the life that need to be forgiven. There are those sins that need to be forgiven that some people call little white lies. I guess you've heard of them. With God, sin is sin, friends, no matter what. There are also sins that people have in their lives that they think no one knows anything about, such as pride, envy, jealousy, gossip. We may think that no one knows about them, but let me show you that God knows everything about us. We may hide them from our friends, but we can't hide them from God. For those of you here this morning are without God's forgiveness in your life, you may be asking, perhaps, what happens when God forgives you of your sin? When Jesus comes into your life, there's a peace of your heart, in your heart that the world can never give you. Romans 5 and 1 says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We all know what it is when sin weighs us down in our hearts and there's no peace of mind. Our consciousness bothers us day after day. Well, friends, we can get rid of this. We can get rid of the shame and all the turmoil and the torment in our lives that we've carried so long. Because like the chorus tells us, burdens are lifted at Calvary. Because Jesus, friends, is here this morning to lift you up your burden, if you would only allow him to. The story tells of a preacher who was going around preaching from place to place when the World War II was going on. He said, I was in my hotel room one day listening to the radio very intensely to see what was happening with the war. I remember I heard a shout outside my window and I rushed to see what it was and the people were shouting, the war has ended, the war has ended. I closed the window, got down on my knees and thanked the Lord that there was peace in the world again. Just like the peace that came into this world that day when the war had ended, come to you when Christ forgives you of your sin. A peace that comes into your life that you can't find in anything or anywhere or anyone else in this world that can give you the only real peace that we can have is in the Lord. This is what Jesus can do for you this morning. He can forgive you of your sin and give you peace of mind. What about it? Do you want to experience the peace that Jesus gives? Oh, the peace my Savior gives. Peace I never knew before. Do you want that peace that my Savior can give you today? This is the place. This is the time to make things right with him. Secondly, he can give you his Holy Spirit. God gives us the Holy Spirit if we've accepted Christ as our personal Savior and friend. John 14, 16 says, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counsel to be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him, for he lives with you, and he will be in you. Here we see that Jesus was talking to his disciples. He was going to leave them. But Jesus assured them that the Holy Spirit would also be with them forever. The disciples knew very well, him very well, but they couldn't really understand why Jesus was going to leave them in the body, but his Spirit would remain with them. John 16 and 7 says, I, But I tell you the truth, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the Counselor will not come, and if I will go, I will send him to you. Here we see that unless Jesus did what he came to do, there wouldn't be any gospel to preach about today, would it? If he didn't die, we could be saved of our sin. If Jesus didn't go back to his Father, the Holy Spirit could not have come and lived with us daily. We all know when we accept Christ as our Savior, we have the Holy Spirit living within our lives. Here's what Paul says in Romans 8 and 9. You, however, are controlled not by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit. 
If the Spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. As Christians, we are to have the Holy Spirit living within our lives. God saved us, us from our sin, providing that the Holy Spirit will always remain with us. We are not then to only receive, but also to give. By this I mean that you and I are God's holy temple. Not the wood for the construction of this building in which we worship from Sunday to Sunday, but you and I are God's holy temples, and we are to live like him and be his example around others around us. God has given us the Holy Spirit to guide us on our Christian walk. In our life, we find there are different things that we need to direct our lives. For instance, light. We need light in order to see where we're going, especially in the dark, because if we don't have any light, we're not going to see where we're going, and we're going to bump into things and hurt ourselves. This is like the Holy Spirit. Just as we need light to see, we need the Holy Spirit to guide and to direct our lives daily. Without the Holy Spirit, we will find ourselves traveling this road all along. The Holy Spirit leads us and directs us in bad, rugged places, but leads us to an eternal, everlasting life with Him. The Holy Spirit does many wonderful things for us. It not only directs us and leads us, but it teaches us many things. The Holy Spirit teaches us more than any teacher will ever will. The Holy Spirit helps us to understand God's Word. And when I say that, I think of a gentleman in my first appointment 17 years ago, Uncle Stanchock, who had a grade 3 education. And I've used this story many times, but it spoke volumes to me. One night we were in a prayer meeting, and he said, Lord, I don't have much. Well, what I got is yours. Help me to understand what it is to live a life of God. You don't have much, friends. You don't need much. Because God is there. And he will help us to understand and help us to live lives worthy of him. I would like to ask you, are you allowing the Holy Spirit to guide and direct your life? For us as Christians here this morning, we can't face this life alone. Once we've decided to follow Jesus, he assured us that his presence will always be with us. Many times in this life we have to face things that we see to be impossible to handle, such as death, loneliness, everyday struggles. But we can be assured that God's Holy Spirit is right by our sides. Many times we feel that we're all alone and God is far away. These are the times that God is very near to us, and we are with Him, and He is not far away at all. During these times, God is pulling us closer and assuring us that He is walking with us, and oftentimes He is carrying us, isn't He? There are many times today that I stop and ask myself, where would I be without the Lord to see me through every day? Where would I have been in 2012 and all the things that we went through as a family? Where would I have been without the Lord in my life? I wouldn't be here this morning. But it's because of His grace. It's because of His love. It's because that He's always with me. We know the answer to that, don't we? We would be bound for hell. For those here this morning without Him, will you give your heart to the Lord? I really can't see personally how someone can live today without Jesus Christ in your life. This has been a difficult week for many people. We've had many phone calls this week of people have been sick and tragedies have happened in their lives. But one thing about it, when God is in the storm, it's easier because he's going to ride it out with us. My prayer is that you will soon reach out to God because time is getting short, friends. Accept him today, and you will never have to face life's problems all alone, because he is here, and he will help you through it. Lastly, I would like for us to look at one more thing that he will do, and one of the most important things when this life is over, that you're going to have a safe crossing from death to life. 
Jesus can give you a, pray, a safe crossing when death comes. Philippians 1 and 21 says, For me to live is Christ, and what? To die is gain. Here Paul tells us that he would rather die than live. Through his death he would see Christ and he wouldn't have any more troubles or heartaches. Can anyone here say, this morning say that dying is gain? All of us have to face trials in this lifetime. We face many, and there's many yet to come. We don't know what the future holds, and I'm glad that we don't. But we know who holds the future, don't we? But it isn't great to know that even when we get to heaven, that all of our trials will be over. But in order for us to experience heaven, something we need to do here first is to get our sins forgiven, and to live according to his will. Then when we get to heaven, we will never have no more problems, no more tears, no more <laughs> sorrows, no more heartaches. Like the chorus is just wait until you see me made over anew. I'll be walking with Jesus all heaven to be. No sickness, no sorrow, no burdens to bear. Just wait until you see me with Jesus up there. Can you see yourself with Jesus in heaven? You had that assurance of smiling, but this was your last day to live. Have you made things right with God? You can say, just wait until you see me with Jesus up there. In conclusion, let me use a story by Billy Graham, and it's entitled, Where is Heaven? He says, what is heaven going to look like? Just that as there is a mystery to hell, there's a mystery to heaven. Yet I believe the Bible teaches that heaven is a literal place. Is it one of the stars? I don't know. I can't even speculate. The Bible doesn't inform us, but I believe out there in space, where there's one million thousand galaxies, eight thousand light years or more in diameter, God can find a place to put us in heaven. He says, I don't worry about where it is. All I know is that I'm going to be there with Jesus someday. Us as Christians don't have to go around discouraged and disappointed with our shoulders bent. But think of the joy, the peace, and the sense of forgiveness that he gives us. And heaven will be ours someday. Are you focused more on where heaven is rather than if you're going there or not? When we know of Billy Graham and all the souls but one to God through the preaching of the gospel, I don't think there's a doubt in any one of our minds this morning that Billy Graham is going to heaven. But let me ask you, do you have that assurance this morning? Is there any doubt in your mind this morning that whether or not you're going to heaven? If you cannot say with a hundred percent, without a shadow of doubt, that you're not going to heaven when you die, don't go through them doors this morning without him. Come and seek him, and you will never be disappointed of giving your life for Jesus Christ. Ask someone there this morning who was serving the Lord. And Dave Reed has said many times, I should have done it years ago. I have proven many times that Christ is sufficient for all of my needs. Can you say this morning that Christ has supplied you with your every need? God promised us that when we chose to follow him, that he will never leave us, that he will never forsake us, and that he will see us through the end when he takes us home to be with him. Do you hear this morning without him? Are you following? Do you want to follow Christ? We all know that we're going to die someday. Isn't it better to have a safe crossing from death to life in Christ than have eternal punishment with Satan in hell? None of us here tonight, this morning, are sure that there's going to be another tomorrow. My friend, do you have the assurance that you will have a safe crossing from life to death when you die? I'm sure all of us here this morning have loved ones in heaven. Those who have gone on before us. If we have Jesus in our lives, we're going to see them again. I'm looking forward to seeing my loved ones. And I know that I'm going to see them one day. And I wrote that message Mother's Day. So my aunt sent me an email and she said to me, I've been thinking about you today. And I know this was a difficult day. And I wrote back and I said, Aunt Ruth, I said, it was. But I have the hope that someday I'm going to see my mom again. And she wrote back and she said, I wish I had your faith. I said, you can have it. It's free. All you have to do is ask for it. 
So this morning again, we've looked at wonderful things that Christ has done, what he's going to do, and what he can do for you this morning. Nowhere in the Bible, friends, will you ever see God force himself on anyone. That's your decision to make. God wants all of his children to be saved, but they must be willing to allow him to do that. Are you willing to allow God to do what he wants to do in your life? He has given you another opportunity this morning. Don't take it for granted. He has given you another privilege to come to his house, to hear about him and his love. My friends, have you allowed him, will you allow him, to come into your heart this morning? You've heard his word once again. You've heard songs. You've heard of, of people talking about the Lord and praying to the Lord this morning. What are you going to do? Will you allow him to save you of your sin? Guys, these are serious days. It's time to get ready. We see the hurricanes and the tornadoes that have struck so many lives this week. 13,000 homes in Orlando flattened. Little children lost their lives in the school. Signs of the times are everywhere, friends. Will you allow the Holy Spirit to guide you every day? And will you allow Jesus to give you a safe crossing from death to life? Don't go home this morning without him. Don't leave this place the way you came. Believe it and take Jesus with you.